Hey folks, I'm really excited because tomorrow I'm leaving on a photography adventure to the Faroe Islands with my buddies Rainer and Josh. Like I said, I'm really excited about that. But before I left, I wanted to put out one more Tiki Actions V6 quick tip. And in this quick tip, I'm gonna show you how the Rapid Mass 2 module makes it really easy to do a lot of basic exposure blends. I've been working on a new video tutorial course called Complete Workflow Lake Bled. And that's gonna come out sometime, well, probably May 1st, I think is when that'll, uh, that'll be available. And in that video course, I'm showing how to do a really complex blend, something that is a little more drawn out, requires a little more advanced techniques, but a lot of exposure blends, especially ones that just really have two main tonal zones, uh, like a bright sky and a dark landscape, with a single uh, fairly basic transition zone uh, can be done really quickly with uh, luminosity mass using the Rapid Mass 2 module in the V6 panel. So that's what I wanna show you today. Now, before we get started with that, I'll also point out that with today's digital cameras that have such a great dynamic range capability, uh, a lot of times, a lot of instances in landscape photography that used to require exposure blending to capture the entire dynamic range don't require exposure blending anymore. So my first rule is if I can get it in one exposure, I do. But if I can't get the entire dynamic range of light in a scene captured in a single exposure, or if I think that there'll be some quality benefits to blending exposures, then I go to exposure blending. And I'll also say that this technique is something that doesn't work in every situation, but when it does work and it works a lot of the time, it's really quick and easy. So it's always worth trying that first. And then if that doesn't work, then going on to taking more drastic blending measures. So uh, let's have it over to Lightroom and Photoshop and I'll show you how this works. All right, so I'm gonna start with this image, which I have two exposures for. One lighter exposure in which the sky is completely blown out and unrecoverable, but it has good shadow exposure detail. And then I have a darker exposure where the darks are completely blocked up and I have good color in the sky. So I'm not gonna make very many raw adjustments here. Things like lens correction, white balance, any transformations if I need to level anything, stuff like that I'll do. But in terms of exposure and highlights and shadows and whatnot, I'll leave that for later. So then first step is to just select both of those image files and edit them in Photoshop as smart objects. And then when those smart objects are opened in Photoshop, I'll come to the TK menu and just run the stack action. And that stacks them into layers in a single image file. However they get stacked, you wanna make sure you have the darker exposure on top. Next, I'm going to turn off the visibility of the top layer, but leave that layer as the active or selected layer. Now I wanna come up to the Rapid Mass 2 module and put it in layer mask mode. And the reason why I turned off that visibility of that darker layer is because I wanna make this first luminosity mask from the values in the lighter exposure. So whatever the, it is that's showing in the image view is what the Rapid Mask 2 module will make luminosity mask from. So next I'm going to click the composite source button and because I have the layer mask mode activated, that lights one composite luminosity mask will be auto applied right to the active layer. So here we go. And now that luminosity mask is there, I can turn the visibility of that layer back on and you can see it's already doing a good job of that blend for us. And you can see without the mask and with the mask, how that mask is allowing the lighter layer to come through. But it's still not perfect yet. So next step is to go to two up mode in the layer mask mode. And I'm just gonna go vertical two up mode, put these side by side. So I've got the mask view here and the actual image view here. And I'm gonna zoom out a couple of steps to center the image. And then I'm gonna match it with this button right there. Now I'm gonna come over and grab a black paintbrush and set the paintbrush blending mode to overlay. 
and get a nice big brush size and set the opacity of the brush to 50%. And I'm gonna paint on the mask view and we'll be able to see what's happening to the image view as I do that. And I really don't want any or very little masking down here. I want all of the lighter exposure to come through down low. And then I wanna use the luminosity mask for this transition zone here. So somewhere in there, I can paint in and see that that's looking really good over here. And so we can see uh, whoops, I can go ahead and close. I don't need the two up mode anymore, so I'm gonna close one of those and bring this back up to full size view. And now we can see that that is a great blend, no halos, perfectly blended, transition zone looks great. And the reason why we open Smart Object is that if I want to come in and further fine tune the exposure value of either of those exposures, I still can. So I can double click on the light one, and if I want those shadows to come up even more, maybe down in there, I can bring the highlights down to help the upper part in the transition zone match the darker exposure a little better. But everything else I might bring up a little bit. I might also increase the contrast down there in the shadows just a bit, and maybe even the clarity. Something like that. When I click OK, we can see it update and there's those changes I made to the foreground looking great. And if I wanted to also do some adjustments to the darker exposure, I could as well. For example, I may wanna bring that sky color down even a little darker, but I may wanna bring the shadows up. So again, that transition zone more closely pairs with or matches with the lighter exposure and helps that blend as well. And there we go. So I think that's a pretty simple and quick way to do exposure blends like that. And let's take a quick look at the mask. So you can see that the transition zone is great. The sky is all white, the landscape's all black, and that luminosity mask is controlling the transition, making it nice and smooth to give us a really nice natural effect. And we're ready to continue the image developing from here. So we'll take a look at this image as a second example, similar to the first example in which I have a dark sky exposure and a lighter landscape exposure. And if you remember, first step is to turn off the visibility of the darker exposure, make sure that it's the active layer, make sure you're in layer mass mode, go ahead and load the composite lights one source to that layer, and then turn the layer back on and we can see the effect that luminosity mask is already having in the blending, but we have some issues here because we've got more stuff going on in the sky than we did in the last one, and we've got some ghosting with the clouds there. That's because our sky isn't totally white yet. So what I wanna do next is actually expand that mask. So as long as I'm in layer mask mode, I can just use the expand button, and that'll get the sky even whiter in the mask, and it'll make it look more natural there. Now, next step, go to two up mode and go to vertical and pull out so it's visible in, in its entirety and match them. Grab a black brush in the overlay blending mode, 50%, and now I'm gonna paint on the mask. And the reason the overlay blending mode is that keeps the painting in the darks and so it won't go up and paint uh, into the sky. And you can see as I'm darkening this foreground, you can really see that lighter exposure coming through. And I can also switch over to a white brush in the overlay blending mode and use that to also paint out even more of the sky, get that sky entirely white and make sure it's really looking good there. As you can see now, we have this great mask that is really completing the blend. Let me close that view and increase that size so you can see that's the blend that's happening. We still do have a few problematic areas around these flowers because they were moving a little bit in the wind, but overall the blend looks pretty good. We could do some cloning or some other more hand-painted masking to try to fix those issues. That's for a longer tutorial. We could also, just like we did in the last one, go back to the raw adjustments and further match these two exposures to make this blend look even better. But you've already seen how that works. Let's go on to example number three. For the third example, I'm gonna take it up a notch. It's still the same basic idea where you've got two main tonal zones. You've got the sky and the land. 
In this case, we've got a third tonal zone, which is the really bright area around the sun. So for this one, I actually have three exposures, but you're gonna see that the, the procedure is still the same. So I've got a exposure for the area around the sun. I've got a middle exposure, which is good for everything else in the sky in the upper part of the image, except for that area right around the sun. And then finally, I have a bright exposure for the landscape. So we're going to start with, again, these top two dark exposures turned off, but I'm gonna select this next middle exposure and then I'll load the composite source and it'll put the mask on that active layer. So we'll start with that. And there it is, we can turn that on and see that the blend is already being done pretty well. I'm going to expand that luminosity mask a little bit to bring in this area even a little bit more, get the sky whiter in the mask. And I might even choose to expand it one more time to really get that set. Then I'm gonna go up to two up mode again and vertical, zoom out and match. And now with the black brush, I can come in and paint in the mask and bring through that lighter exposure all through down here in the foreground. And some of those trees are really bright in this mask and in the overlay mode is not allowing me to paint on those trees. So I'm gonna actually go back to normal mode and just sweep across here and get everything nice and dark to fully bring through that front exposure. And I'm just feathering up into here. I wanna leave again that transition zone to help that blend happen with that luminosity mask. But you can see that, whoops, let me get rid of that view for a minute here. Get out of two up mode and go big. So that blend's already happening pretty nicely. We just have that area around the sun that's left over. So again, the procedure's just the same. I'm gonna leave that top exposure off going to go ahead and make the that exposure active and I'm going to load a new composite source based on the image in this state. So I'll go there and that's what that mask looks like. I may even want to zero in a little bit more on the area around the sun. So in this case, instead of expanding the selection, I may contract the selection. So I can do that and get that area around the sun a little bit more zeroed in on, and we can do more of that as we go if we need to. So now I can turn on this layer and see how that blend is looking. It's looking pretty good. Do I want to contract even more? Let's see. Yeah, I think that helped out getting that blend looking a little more natural. And then this is where I can do some matching with the raw file. So I can come into this guy here. And what I want to do with this is actually um, open it up a bit so it more closely matches the exposure underneath it. I want to keep the area around the sun somewhat looking good, but I can bring the exposure up slightly and let's see. Yeah, so that helps that blend a bit. And I can also bring down the opacity of that entire layer until that blend looks really smooth. I can also come into this raw file and do some more work with the highlights around the sun just to try to make this exposure match the darker exposure a little bit more and bring that in. And when we're done there, you can see that's a really good looking natural blend of three exposures. We've got a few issues, for example, like some of the um, rays from the sun aren't lining up perfectly and we've got some flare and ghosting and things like that that we need to take care of in cleanup but to do a quick blend of three exposures, pretty fast and easy. So that's all there is to it. Uh, just to recap, if you remember, it's first of all, turn off the dark layer and make sure it's the active layer. Create the composite source and layer mask mode so that adds the, the layer mask to that top dark layer. Turn the layer back on, go into two up mode, paint on the mask to bring through the full landscape and you're pretty much good to go. You can go in and tweak the raw adjustments to further get the two exposures to blend together or match or overlap and uh, and then and then it's done so that's a really great easy way to create natural looking exposure blends with great image quality and no worries about halos or fine selections and things like that and uh, it works in a lot of images like this where you have two main uh, tonal areas you know a bright sky and a landscape and a fairly uh, simple transition zone in between so I hope that was helpful for you. Thanks for joining me for this uh, TK Actions V6 quick tip. 
and I'll be gone for a couple of weeks in the Faroe Islands. You can follow me over on uh, Instagram or my Facebook page if you want to keep up with those adventures. And I'll be looking forward to seeing you in other quick tips and video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and just out there wherever. Take care.